And the biggest point I want to say, are you really ready to be a boss? Are you really ready to be responsible for other people and take whatever ails that come along with that? Like another video so y'all it's been a long time coming when it comes to the salon stuff hold up wait a minute yeah it's rewind time hey y'all i came back for another quick video because i'm real transparent when it comes to my journey with this entrepreneur life and i think a lot of people don't go into detail about the good and the bad and the ugly. They always want to tell you they triumph and things like that. And so pretty much I'm in my new salon or whatever. And I have so much going on. Like I'm doing this by myself. Yes, I have supported others, but it's a lot of stuff going on. I'm still doing hair, you know, doing different things, trying to maintain. And I forgot to put the utilities in my name. Like I'm just going to be straight honest with it. Forgot to put the utilities in my name. And so they turned the thing, turned um, my utilities off and I had to go find another place for my stylist to work for the week. And that's extra money having to be spent. Now granted, I didn't have to pay anything to get my utilities on. It's just an inconvenience on my stylist and I'm costing them money. And the biggest point I want to say, are you really ready to be a boss? Are you really ready to be responsible for other people and take whatever ails that come along with that? Like everybody's not willing to do that. Like I was ready to pay for them to go somewhere else for a week to a suite um, and pay for them to be in a week and still have to pay my rent here, still having to pay utilities when they do come. I wasn't going to let that fall on my stylist now. They chose not to go and, you know, they left. Like, they left. Like, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. I'm not going to try to soften the blow or whatever like that. Like, that's the consequences that I have to pay for being overwhelmed, for, you know, whatever the case may be. There's no excuse, you know, for me having to have them be inconvenienced. Like I said, I found somewhere for them to go, but they was like, nah, we cool. You know, nothing to you or whatever like that. But this, you know, that's their business. So, you know, I'm f affecting them. So the biggest thing is like, are you ready to be responsible for other people? Are you do? Are you in the position to have to pay something, you know, and take that loss? Like I was going to have to pay like a, like $200 just for a week for them to go work somewhere else because my lights was off. And it was only not, you know, calling the night, light company and everything. Like, hey, can y'all come out sooner? You know, I got people trying to work, you know, things like that. And it was something as, as an individual, as a boss, you know, that's, I had to take that L. Not only, I, lo I lost two of my stylists, you know, that's money every week. And it's like no hard feelings or nothing like that. It was just something that I messed up on. Like, I have no problem admitting and taking accountability. I apologize. I found accommodations, but it wasn't good enough. And sometimes that's that's what it is. It's, it's the nature of the business. It's not going to go your way. You're going to fail. Like, everybody think that this dream is easy. Everybody think that this dream is free. It's not. Everybody said, oh, I started with this. I started with that. That may be true, but they never go into detail, you know, about what's really involved. Like, it's like it's so much to do. Like, it's so much to do. Like, in my video, I kind of break down everything I had to do to even get to this point or whatever like that. Obviously, the lights is on, but they was off for 24 hours and that that's detrimental to somebody's business. They had, you know, a day full of clients or whatever like that and I messed that up for them. Like I said, they didn't have, like, I made accommodations. It doesn't, however they feeling, that's how they feel because at the end of the day, we're independent contractors at the end of the day. Are you willing to pay payroll and not pay yourself? Are you willing to let your stuff go? Off? You know, like, those are questions you need to ask yourself when it comes to starting a business like especially if you got employees like at least i, I have independent contractors if i had employees you probably would have still had to pay them like you still have to pay their day, day technically you still even though there's no work available that you still would have to pay them depending on you know your payroll model but any other big brands or whatever like that they still would be paying their workers for that day because they showed up for work so that's the the biggest thing i want to be telling people is be prepared like I want to get a new car this year. I might not get my new car because I want to make sure my business is running. I want to make sure my household is cool. So there's no need for me to add extra bills. And I'm in the start of my business. They tell you in the first five to seven years, you don't, not first five to seven years. I'm sorry. In the first year, you really don't make a profit. You're maintaining your business. You want to make sure you have enough money for things to happen. Shit going to happen. Like there, there's no way around it. Things are going to happen. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Stuff is going to happen. Stuff is going to fall through. And you have to be prepared 
head to pick up the pieces and, and be a, a problem solver. That's what I feel like being an entrepreneur. You have to be a problem solver. When stuff don't go right, okay, do you have the means and the creativity? But okay, this is how I can fix this. Like there, there was no room to cry. There was no room to be upset. There was no room for anything but me for the to, only to find a solution. And whether that solution worked or not, it, that's what it was. Like being a boss, being an entrepreneur, it's very hard work. I literally don't have, like, I try to set boundaries to my clients, but it's really no days off, like none. I'm constantly having to do something for my business, whether it be my online business, my hair salon, answering texts, checking emails, uh, shipping items, talking to my landlord, paying, you know, it's, it's all these different things that tie into making wigs, selling bundles, ordering people, order like when we, when we want to do a new product, I'm up talking to vendors. Call. Even that, vendors are across seas. You up in the middle of the night trying to talk to them and negotiate prices and order your stuff and then go to sleep. So now the team most entrepreneurs don't get eight hours of sleep. Cause we got to get back up, do the work, you know, and that's why I kind of want to be get from behind the chair. At the end of the day, it's hard to be the boss and the worker. It's it's so hard, so so hard to be the boss and the worker. It's um I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's so hard to be the boss and the worker. Like it's so so hard. And so I'm trying to come from behind the chair so I could just be, you know, quote unquote. But I don't mean that in like no, oh I'm the shit type thing. It's more so. It, that's what it is. Like running a business is really hard, and I'm really big on delegating. Set your price where you can de delegate some of your responsibilities. That's what I want to say. Whether it be a virtual assistant or, you know, hiring a little cousin to do, you know, like one of my friends, I have her send out messages to my followers, you know, just to keep engagement up. Like it's all these, even social media alone, <laughs> it's a job to keep all this running and you can't do it by yourself. So I always say when you find areas to delegate, go ahead and delegate. Don't, you know, show them how to do it and everything. But I'm telling you, this ain't no easy walk in the park at all. I love it. I don't regret it. I'm not saying that I'm going to ever do it again. It's certain things I might have done different, but it's no easy walk in the park. And you have to be prepared to be able to take that blow and keep on going. You got to keep going. Like there's no, like for me, there's no option. There's no, if I'm not doing hair, I don't want to go back to nobody's job. Like I really don't. Um, if nothing else, I might go for insurance purposes. But other than that, I don't want to have to work on somebody's job. Like I just don't want to do that. Like that's just not something I'm looking forward to at all. Like that's the end. This video was really to kind of go into, are you really ready to be a boss? Because a lot of times behind the scenes, these Instagram people or other people, you know, hair people, whoever it is, they don't show you the, the losses behind the scenes. That's what you never see is the losses behind the scenes. And I just wanted to be true. I always told myself I was going to be transparent in this journey with being YouTube and being open is I took an L this week and I, I don't have, I'm not pointing no fingers at nobody. I'm taking accountability. I took an L this week and it's not going to be my last L. And the damn show ain't my first L. That's it. That's all. Like, you got to still get to the money. You still got to get to the bag. I want a G-Wagon at the end of the day. I want a house in Georgia. There's certain things I want in my life. I want my new car. I want to be a key until you ride. Like, I may get it. I may not. Who knows? But if I want it bad enough, I'm going to work hard enough. But my business comes first. Like, my household and my business is, is intertwined. So, it's like, I have to make sure these things are running. Because at this point, having stylists here, people rely on me to have this place up and going. And again, it was a, like I said, it was an overlook. I'm taking full responsibility there. If no, like it was, it was on me and I was willing to pay what I need to pay to accommodate them. That's it. That's all. You have to be willing to do that. You got to be like, I, I say it on Instagram all the time. You got to be able to go broke for your business. Cause if you're not going to go broke, nobody's going to invest in you. Nobody's going to buy with you. If you're not willing to invest into your own, if you're not going to buy into your business, who else is? So stop thinking that you're going to get a business up and going for free. You, it's not going to happen at all. It's not going to happen. Once it's gone, it's gone. I don't be dwelling on, damn, I could have did this with that. Oh, I wasted this money. No, it's not always I had to find out. So whether it be buying a product, like people be saying, oh, I just spent so much money on vendors. You're not the only one that spent money on vendors. Like that's that's the that's the nature of the business, to find a vendor. Some people get it with ease, some people don't. Some people it's given to it. We can't dictate how we get vendors, but you gonna spend some money. Like there's no, there's no way around it. You go spend some money. You got to test product. You just can't be like, oh, I bought this product now for the user. No, you have to test several. You got to get several prices. You know, it's, it's different things that you have to do to get your business up and going. Regardless if it's testing clothes, a chef, they got to, you know, do a recipe a couple times to make sure they got it right. You know, it's trial and error. There's no formula to open in a business. Everybody's outcome will be different, but there's no exact science to this. Like it's none whatsoever. So I just want to show you 
what to be prepared for. I don't want to scare you. I don't want to talk you out of your dreams or anything like that. I just want to prepare you for things that's ahead. Like, I don't want to make it seem like, oh, yeah, it's all flowers and daisies. It's not. It's not at all. It's not. It's not. It's not. Like, I don't know how many times I can say it's just not. But I'm not, like, saying don't do it. I love the freedom that I have. I could go, I could be off for a week if I want to. And don't have to answer to nobody. I ain't got to pick no PTO in. I ain't got to do none of that. I could just say I'm not working. Block my days off so nobody book. And I'm gone. I love that feeling. I don't want to go back to having to work to a 9 to 5. Or I was working 12 hours shifts when I was working. So it wasn't no such thing as 9 to 5. But I don't want to go back to clocking in and answering to nobody. I want to answer to my clients. That's it. And even then, it's boundaries to that. So hopefully, I encourage somebody. I prepared somebody. You know, I just want I just want to be transparent in my journey. Like I want to take this journey along with my subscribers, my friends, my family, whoever is watching. I just want to take you on a journey and I want to be transparent about it. I don't want to um be that person that make it seem like, oh, everything is good to go because it ain't, it's not. That's it, that's all it's not. My client about to come in, y'all. So I'ma holler at y'all next time. <laughs>